everyone? Good. Uh, all going well so far? Uh, I, I'm really pleased to be part of this. It's such a wonderful thing to be part of. Uh, so yes, my name's Katie, and uh, yeah, probably the best way to describe me is to say that I am a mathematician. And uh, to give you some idea of what that means, uh, it means that I studied maths at school, as I suspect some of the people in the room are still currently in the process of doing. Uh, I went to university and I studied maths there, and at the end of university, I decided I still hadn't had enough maths. So I carried on, uh, did a bit of research into maths, and uh, now my job is in a lot of different ways to talk about maths. So I lecture part-time at university. I also uh, do talks like this. I do workshops. I go into schools. I go to science festivals, talk about maths on YouTube, on the radio, on the TV, basically anywhere that people will allow me to talk about maths. So this is, I've managed to get in uh, and I'm here doing this now. So I've, I've brought along some maths to share with you. And as Helen has said, uh, I'm going to try and give you a little bit of an insight into what being a mathematician is. Because um, it's sort of a bit mysterious. I guess if you, if I think back to when I was at school, I probably couldn't have answered that question. What does a mathematician do all day? Are they just counting higher and higher? <laughs> just, just sit you because something might happen. You don't know. Um, <laughs> It's, it's really not clear at all, and I, I think it's, it's a bit of a shame because there's some really interesting things to say about this. So uh, the title of the bit that I've got for you is called uh, Unsolved Puzzles in Maths, and I've called it this for a couple of reasons. So, um, you know, I'm a mathematician, a lot of my friends are mathematicians, and one thing that we all have in common is that we all really like puzzles. Like, we really enjoy doing puzzles and sharing puzzles and writing puzzles and entering international puzzle competitions and coming 11th, uh, and it's, <laughs> it's a big hobby, really. And, I think it's not a coincidence that people who are interested in maths enjoy doing puzzles because there's something really common about the idea of kind of finding the answer or maybe getting stuck partway through something and thinking, how can I look at this a different way? Can I break this down into smaller problems? Can I use something I already know to try and attack this problem? Um, it's very much the same process. Um, and I guess if you are a mathematician, um, it's kind of nice because I th I, well, I think, probably, if you study maths at school, it's quite easy to get the impression that maths is kind of done. You know, we're, we're teaching people maths that was done hundreds of years ago. All of it's very well understood and well known, and this is the kind of thing you learn at school. But obviously, people are still researching this. And when you're doing maths at school, the puzzles that you get are kind of, you know, what's the answer to this problem? If you go on to study maths at university, the puzzles become a bit more interesting. They become, you know, how does this work and why does this work and how does it connect to other things? And when you become a researcher in maths, you kind of get to pick your own puzzles. This is essentially what happens. So, the, I mean, I, I should caveat, this is my personal experience of maths, because obviously there are various different types of people who research maths. There are pure mathematicians who just do very kind of pure, logical, abstract things, which is the kind of maths that I'm into. Um, there are also people who do applied maths, who take real world problems and say, how can we use the maths that the pure mathematicians have been working on to try and solve this problem? Um, and, you know, there are whole different branches of maths that study uh, different things in different ways. But I guess, the thing about maths that a lot of people don't realise is that it's actually really creative. A lot of people think of maths as being at kind of the opposite end of a spectrum to something like art. You know, it's, it's, you know you're, you're one kind of person or you're the other. And that's really not the case at all. So mathematicians have to spend all of their time having ideas. They have to think about things in ingenious new ways. They have to make connections between things. And they have to come up with things that they think might be true. This is the mathematician's job is to say, OK, I've seen a pattern in these numbers. I think they're going to carry on doing this. Or I've seen a connection between these two things. I think this is here for a reason. And I think it's also related to this other thing. And this is my idea. And you put your idea out there. And then your job is to prove it. And that sounds very kind of, you know, playground, go on then, prove it. Uh, but it kind of is. Uh, and in fact, one of the best descriptions I've heard of, of mathematical proof is that you have to convince yourself, first of all, then you have to convince your friend that the thing that you've said is true, and then you have to convince your enemy that the thing you've said is true as well. And I really like that as a description, because what you're doing has to be plausible, it has to be something that's believable, that makes sense, that fits together, but then you also have to check every possible case and make sure that it will definitely always be true. And that is essentially what mathematicians do all day. If you can prove your idea, your conjecture, your proposition, whatever you've come up with, you will end up with a theorem. Uh, and this is a word which mathematicians use. Uh, I don't think it's really used much else outside of maths, really. I think this is very much just a maths word. Uh, other subjects have theories. 
Um, but maths is unique in that we have theorems, and theorems are definitely true. Gravity, theory. <laughs> Just saying. Still theoretical, but a theorem is something that has been proved that we know is definitely always going to be true. So I want to do a quick show of hands in the room. I'm interested to see who can name a theorem. So without even waiting for me to point at them, several people have said Pythagoras. Excellent. Anyone got any other theorems? A uh, hand in the middle there. Fermat's little theorem. Good choice of theorem. There were other Fermat's theorems you could have gone for, but I like that. Uh, yes? Bayes' theorem. Excellent probability. Excellent. Nice bit of maths. Any other theorems? I'm always interested to see what answers I get in a room full of people. Anyone else? Harry Ball. Harry Ball theorem. That is genuinely a maths theorem, and it's, it's from the area that I've researched in topology, and it is very, very cool. Uh, in fact, that image of uh, vectors, vector fields inside a heart, that was very exciting because there's some brilliant maths behind that. Uh, yes? Cauchy's. Cauchy's theorem, yeah. Fantastic piece of maths. So the, the, the four-color map theorem, yes. That is definitely a really nice piece of maths as well. Please look up all of these things. They're excellent. I don't have time to tell you about them all. But... When you do maths, when you've done something and you've proved it, you get a theorem, and that goes into, I guess, a toolbox of mathematical ideas. People can then use your theorem for the rest of time. Also, it gets named after you, which is great, um, uh, unless your name is Harry Ball. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a really nice kind of this idea that we've got a piece of maths. I mean, there are question marks as to whether all theorems are definitely named after the person that deserves to have them named after them. But anyway, um, you know, these things do carry on. Now, I've promised you uh, unsolved puzzles in maths because I want to try and give you a sense of what mathematicians are thinking about. Now, obviously, I can't explain, you know, cutting-edge maths research to you, but there are still problems within maths which don't have answers, but that actually um, uh, were pretty simple. I can explain them to you in, in a couple of minutes. So I'm going to try and share one of these with you. Um, so this is uh, an example of a theorem which we've already had mentioned. Uh, if you have a triangle like this with a right angle in it, we have a theorem which tells us that the length of that side will be 5. Uh, if the sides are, e.g., 5 and 12, does anyone know this one? 13. 13, good. Always memorize the first two of anything, because <laughs> then people think you know them all. Um, but these are examples of things where you have nice whole numbers, you have integers on all three sides. And even if you don't, even if those two numbers don't give you a nice whole number, Pythagoras' theorem will still tell you what that third side is. But if you're just interested in these cases, if you're just integerested, <laughs> sorry, what you can do is increase this to a slightly more difficult puzzle. So if I put these, uh, instead of being triangles, these are now rectangles. So the line that I can use uh, Pythagoras' theorem to work out is the diagonal of the rectangle. So if I now pop that rectangle up into 3D, I have a cuboid. And each of the faces of the cuboid has a diagonal. And if the sides of the uh, cuboid are A, B, and C, those three diagonals using different combinations of A, B, and C and Pythagoras' theorem, hopefully you could work out what the lengths of D, E, and F are as well. Now, if you do this, it's possible to find the sets of numbers A, B, and C such that they're all integers and D, E, and F are all integers as well. All six of these numbers are whole numbers. That's kind of nice. It's like a pleasing set of things. Um, it is possible, and if you do this, you get an object called an Euler brick. And Euler was a Swiss mathematician who has lots of things named after him. And uh, who knows whether or not this was something he actually did or just someone went, you know who's great? Euler. Um, <laughs> but Euler brick uh, is the term for a cuboid where all of the edges and all the diagonals are all whole numbers. Um, and if it helps to remember this, I've got a picture of Euler and photoshopped in a brick. <laughs> Does that help? I don't know. Um, but... Um, it's possible to do this. So if you have these three numbers for your edges, then the diagonals of this cuboid will all be whole numbers as well. And there are infinitely many of these. So as far as I'm concerned, this has now become slightly boring because there's loads of them and I don't care anymore. So I want to make it even harder. I'm going to take it up one notch further. I'm not going to go to four-dimensional uh, cuboids, but what I am going to say is that as well as all of those six numbers being whole numbers, I also want this length, which is the kind of 3D diagonal through the cuboid. Um, it's sometimes called the space diagonal, from the top left corner to the, the front top left corner to the back bottom right corner. 
across the cuboid. Um, if that's a whole number as well, then this is what's called a perfect cuboid. And there is no known example of a perfect cuboid. No one has ever found one. Uh, but nor has anyone managed to prove that you couldn't make one. So it's, it's an open question. We don't actually know the answer. There might be such a thing as a perfect cuboid, or there might not. And it is still an open question that mathematicians are still working on, uh, which I think is, is such a fantastic thing, because it's such a simple question, um, but we don't actually know the answer. Now, um, I just want to finish by saying that obviously there are more difficult questions in maths than this, because this is obviously something that I've picked out as a very simple example, just to give you an idea. Um, but of course, uh, people who research maths um, spend years, months, lifetimes, that was in the wrong order, months, years, lifetimes, uh, working on particular problems. Sometimes they just unlock a very tiny part of it. Sometimes uh, they you know, solve the whole thing themselves because they focus on it entirely and don't do anything else for the rest of their lives. Um, but it is something that if you are interested in puzzles and you're not prepared to give up until you have solved a puzzle, uh, I can recommend maths research very strongly because there are still people working on the perfect cuboid. There is a person in the Netherlands who I've been in email contact with who is still looking. They've got a computer running combinations and checking different numbers, um, but it's still an open question. So uh, I'm going to finish there, but I'll put my email address if you want to get in touch with me. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to drop me a line. But thank you very much.